The Eurasia Animal Pack, the newest DLC for Planet Zoo is here, so let's have a look at 8 brand new animals that were added to the game with this new pack. As always, huge thanks to Frontier for giving me the early access to this DLC. But without any further ado, let's take a close look at all those new animals. Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates, and welcome back to my channel. The first animal that I wanted to show you is the new Takin. Takin is one of those animals that I wanted to see in Planet Zoo for such a long time and it was totally worth the wait because it is simply gorgeous. I just love how it looks. It looks so realistic and the coat on this animal is just insane with those spots, those irregular marks. It looks so, so good. In this video, of course, we'll have a look at all of those new animals. We'll have a look at their babies, some animations, their Zoopedia facts, and also some of the unique color variations. We are looking at the female Takin right now. Uh, and by the way, you can see the scratching animation, which is super cool. Uh, the female is slightly smaller, slightly like leaner than the male. Uh, we were looking at the male previously, but the difference is really slight. Uh, there are actually four different species of Takin or our, on our planet. And I believe that this is actually a Sichuan Takin, looking at its coat and its, at its color and so on. But Planet Zoo doesn't really specify, that was a jump, <laughs> which species of Takin this is. Uh, it is just, you know, uh, marked as Takin, uh, but to be specific, I think that they should call it a, a Sichuan Takin. Takin is such a unique looking animal. It sort of looks like a mixture of a bear and a goat. Uh, it lives high in the mountains in Tibet, in China. Uh, it has those really big hooves that help it to climb on very like steep mountains. Uh, it also has this coat to protect it from, uh, from the winter. And I think that Planet Zoo team just did an amazing job recreating it in our game. We of course also need to take a look at this adorable baby. It is slightly darker than its parents when it comes to the coloration. It has those really beautiful big eyes, the tiny adorable like uh, horns, very like droopy ears and is overall such a such a cute uh, animal. Uh, I still believe that some people don't know what Takin is. It is such a cool animal and uh, I know that a lot of you will fall in love with it once you release it in your zoos. Let's have a look at some of the Zoopedia facts for the Takin. It is vulnerable, the population in the wild is unknown. This is actually a really beautiful photo of the Takin. Uh, it lives in Asia in countries like Bhutan, India, Neymar, China. Uh, here are the biomes that you can use for it. I was quite surprised by the tropical biome, by the way. Uh, so it doesn't need that much space. Uh, the, it has quite a big temperature range. Uh, it needs quite a stronger friends, the great free, but the fence doesn't need to be that high. Uh, the group size is 2 to 20, so we can have up to 20 of those in one enclosure, but only one male. Two males will fight. It is uh, very like common for the ungulates in this game. Uh, the relation with humans is neutral. The guests cannot enter the habitat. Uh, the male is slightly bigger, as I told you guys, uh, than a female. Uh, it has uh, has one offspring per mating event and the reproduction in captivity is easy. Uh, when it comes to the enrichment, this is a typical ungulate enrichment that you probably know from Planet Zoo. Uh, almost all the hoofstock animals use the same enrichment uh, and it doesn't have any interspecies enrichment with any other animals in the game. Here we have an animal that the whole community went crazy about when it was announced me included, of course, and it absolutely is was worth going crazy about because it is just perfect. It is a mute swan, uh, our first proper waterfowl in the game. Uh, it is just perfect. It spends a lot of time in the water. Uh, it is a very unique bird compared to all the birds that we have in the game. Uh, it is very clumsy on land, just as it is in real life. It just walks very slow like swinging from one leg to another. Uh, we are looking at the male right now. The male is bigger and it has this like characteristic knob or bump uh, over the, the beak. 
Uh, they can actually use this uh, enrichment for the beavers, this beaver dam. They are going there and just flapping uh, their wings like, you know, uh, taking a bath or something. Here we have a female and uh, the female is slightly smaller, but also the easiest way to distinguish them is by looking at this bump in here. Uh, the female has a very small one, whilst the male has a like a prominent one. Uh, it is also coming out of the water and here we have something that I wanted to show you. A little baby, which is actually called a signet. The signets are grey when they are small and with time they are becoming white. Uh, I know that this is called a mute swan, but it can actually make some sounds, some chirping, uh, it can do some hissing. Uh, it is mute compared for, to, for example, a trumpeted swan, which is very loud. I love how they eat, because while eating, they are moving their tails like this. They look so happy while eating, just like me. <laughs> As I told you, they can use this beaver dam enrichment. They are just bathing in it, coming, flapping their wings, and there's a really cool way of how they are getting out. It will just, you know, fly a bit for us. It's just a jump, but it uses its wings and it looks so amazing. <laughs> yeah. So I saw some people wondering if they will be able to fly in the game. Unfortunately, it's not the case. It, it just acts the same as our flamingos or cranes. Uh, it can like sort of jump fly over some obstacles, uh, but I was waiting for them to do that. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to catch it, but there is some sort of a fly animation, but it's just sort of more like a jump than a flight. Uh, I must say that this is probably my favorite animal of uh, from the whole pack, just because of how unique it is to all of the animals that we have in the game. And suddenly, I just cannot imagine my Zeus without this animal, so I will probably add it to all of my projects going on. There's actually one unique color variation for the Mute Swan and we are looking at it right now and it is very slight, you probably don't see it at the first glance. But the Mute Swan has a leucistic uh, color variation and the biggest difference are uh, the feet. It has pink fit, feet compared to the black feet of the other swans. Uh, maybe we'll see it better right now. The difference is really slight but uh, just to prove that I am not coming up with something <laughs> that I am only seeing, uh, here we have the leucistic white feathers and pink feet. Let's have a look at the Zoopedia for the Mute Swan. Oh my god, this photo is so beautiful. Uh, it is least concerned. Uh, it lives in Europe and parts of Asia. The biomes are aquatic and temperate. Uh, it doesn't need a lot of space, but it of course needs water. Uh, the temperature range is quite big. Uh, it doesn't need a strong fence. The fence also doesn't need to be high. Uh, you can have up to 50 of them in one enclosure, up to 20 25 males and 25 females, they are forming those pairs, so you probably should have the even numbers. Uh, they are confident when it comes to the relation with humans and the guests can enter the habitats, although I know that they can get quite aggressive when they have their young, so uh, they probably didn't do that in Planet Zoo, but it would be so, so cool if they could attack <laughs> our guests. Uh, they can have up to, uh, for free to, uh, to five offspring per mating event and the reproduction in, in captivity is very easy. Uh, when it comes to uh, the research, here's, uh, here are some of the uh, enrichment items that they can use. They can use the beaver pool, as I told you guys, and they can use also this water pool. Uh, and for example, a fruit spike tree, slow feeder, and a forage pool, just as, as our flamingos. Uh, it actually has an what interspecies, interspecies enrichment with some other temperate European animals, such as the fallow deer, the red deer, uh, the wild boar, and the vicent. Here's an animal that I know a lot of you wanted to see in Planet Zoo, the wild boar. It is so fluffy looking, but actually this coat is not fluffy, it is very stiff. Uh, we are looking at the male right now, the male has those really like distinctive like long teeth in here. Uh, it is also slightly bigger and slightly more like fluffy uh, and 
such a w nice looking animal. I think it looks even better than the uh, in the teaser in the first trailer that we got because I saw some people not being really happy about the model, but for me it looks amazing. We we got so many of those new swine species uh, in <laughs> in this year. Planet Zoo team really said yeah, you know they want pigs, give them pigs because it is a third one after the. Uh, after the Red River Hawk, the colored peccary. I know that the peccary is not a pig. Uh, and the wild boar. By the way, next to us, here is an uh, albino boar. So there's a special color variation uh, that is an albino, and you can see it right here. We all know that little piglets are adorable and the piglets of the wild boars are not an exception and I love how they look with all those stripes. They are really colorful, it's hard to miss them in an enclosure and yeah, a wild boar is a very solid animal that I am so happy that finally was added to Planet Zoo uh, because it is such a staple for uh, European zoos, a lot of European zoos have them uh, because I saw some concerns in the community. Uh, people were asking, have you seen a zoo that houses a wild boars? Yes, I've seen a lot of them. <laughs> the boar can of course use the mud buff and we are about to see this animation right here. We are looking at the female now. The females are smaller, they are leaner uh, and you can clearly see that we were looking at the male before and this is definitely a female and she just loves this mud. Here's a closer look at the leucistic wild boar. It is of course white, it has a pink snout and red eyes. It is really really nice looking. Of course it decided to poop for us but yeah this is a leucistic wild boar. Here's a Zoopedia for a wild boar and this might actually be one of the most beautiful pictures out of the entire Zoopedia. It is so gorgeous. Uh, the wild boar is least concerned. It, uh, the population in the wild is unknown. It lives in most of Europe and in this big part of Asia and some part of Africa uh, in variety of different biomes. So there's quite a lot of plants, for example, that you can use for it. Uh, it doesn't need that much space for one adult. Uh, uh, it doesn't grow as like dramatic if you add more adults. It has quite a big temperature uh, range. Uh, you need quite a strong fence for it, but it doesn't need to be that high. Uh, when it comes to the species data, you can have up to 30 in one uh, enclosure, but only one male. Uh, it is confident with humans, uh, but the guests cannot enter the habitat. Of course, it can get quite dangerous, especially when there are little, little uh, piglets uh, I've seen <laughs> aggressive boars because I live in the place where there's a lot of them in the forest. Uh, they can have uh, two to five offspring per mating even and reproduction in captivity is very easy. Uh, they have a lot of uh, things that they can use when it comes to enrichment uh, just as with most of pigs in this game. Uh, also, the food enrichment, I really like giving the forage box to them. I think it looks phenomenal when they're digging with their snouts and looking for food in there. Uh, it gets the interspecies enrichment from uh, living with the fallow deer, mute swan, red deer and the vicent. Here we have the animal that was probably one of the most requested animals to be added to Planet Zoo, the wolverine. It was just using the scratching post. It is so well made. The fur on this one looks amazing, the face looks super, super well made. Uh, it can actually use a lot of enrichment items, it can climb, it is such an interesting animal. It is a, a perfect addition in my eyes uh, to Planet Zoo, very like, uh, I can already see so many different ideas for uh, habitat for this one. We are looking at the male, the male is bigger. Here is a little social animation that they are about to do. Yeah, they are showing how feisty they are. The wolverine is a really feisty animal. It is said to be able to kill a moose, which is so much bigger than it. Uh, but yeah, they can use borrows. Uh, they can use a lot of different enrichment items. 
and it is so cool to finally get a new animal that can climb and it's been a while uh, the last animal that we got that was able to climb was a sand cat but that what didn't feel too uh like unique because it's another cat but here we have totally different animal that we didn't have before i am not sure if this is using a rig that we already had in the game this is not a binturong or anything like that this is totally different and new uh, so uh, yeah very exciting addition very happy to have it uh, and wait till you see the babies here is a look at the wolverine using a climbing frame just to prove that he can indeed climb uh, and it has a really cool way of coming down <laughs> as you guys can see it goes bat first <laughs> uh, so yeah yeah climbing planet zoo not always perfect but still so 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 amazing that it can actually climb remember the tag toy a uh, tag rope toy enrichment only two animals up to this point could use it uh, the doll and the dingo and right now finally some other species can use this enrichment toy and this is of course the wolverine so so happy to see that and here we have a tiny baby of the wolverine it is a contender for a title of the cutest baby from this entire dlc uh, the next contender is coming soon you'll meet him very soon uh, but this one is also exceptional i just love this little guy so much it has those bi really big paws uh, that look a bit too big for it it has like a really adorable face and uh, overall the wolverine is such a such an amazing animal that i just can't wait to build something cool for uh, they are for sure coming to the Hill city zoo we actually have two unique color variations for the, for the wolverines uh, here is the albino one which is totally white it has this pinkish nose and i believe red eyes or like orange eyes and there's also a leucistic variation, which is also white, but it still has some brown coloration on the paws, paws and on the tip of its tail. And the nose is also black and it has darker eyes. Here we have the Zoopedia for the Wolverine. Uh, it is least concerned. The population in the wild is unknown. Uh, it lives in Europe, Asia and North America. Uh, the biomes are tundra and taiga. Uh, it needs quite a lot of space for such a small animal, but they are very territorial. Uh, it needs some climbing frames in their habitats. Uh, the temperature range is quite big, but it can live in quite low temperatures which is cool to see for more like taiga based zoos and so on uh, you need to have a quite strong fence it needs to be climb proof and it needs to be quite high uh, you can have only two uh, in one enclosure one male and one female it is neutral with humans and the guests cannot enter the habitat of course it is a dangerous animal that as i told you can kill the moose or a elk or a deer or anything like that so it's very feisty uh, it has one to five offspring per mating event and the reproduction in captivity is difficult uh, it has quite a lot of enrichment items at, that it can use as you guys can see uh, both for food and for toy uh, and of course it doesn't have any interspecies enrichment no, you are not watching a new Star Wars movie, you are just looking at the Saiga antelope. This is one of the most unique looking ungulates there is on our planet. They have this really weird looking nose that sort of looks like a nose of a tapir or a little trunk of, a, or a, of an elephant. Uh, they have those really pointy horns, uh, very thin legs, and this is basically how they look in real life. The model is beautiful, uh, the animations of the nose especially are just spot on. We are of course looking at the male, the male has horns, the females don't have horns. Uh, it is an animal with a very important conservation story, like conservation mission. It was almost uh, like uh, gone, it was almost died, like it, we almost lost it. it. We were able to you know, protect it, but it is still very uh, vulnerable to a lot of diseases to climate change and so on so uh, the future of this animal is very uncertain and because of that i am glad that we have it 
in uh, in Planet Zoo right now. Of course, it decided to poop for us, <laughs> as they always do in those showcases. We look at the male, so now it's time to have a look at the female. Uh, what stands out to me are those very big, like eyes. They are enormous uh, compared to the size of its uh, of its face. Here we have a baby Saiga antelope. Uh, it has those really long legs, it has very big eyes, smaller snouts, very long eyelashes, and is, it is totally adorable. Here we have an albino Saiga antelope, and what I love about this is uh, are those big blue eyes. They look totally like mesmerizing. Uh, and yeah, so cool that we have another color variation of this very weird looking animal. And here we have a male that will scratch on the tree, just to show you some uh, animation of, uh, of the Saiga antelope. It basically scratches its nose. It's so big that they probably need to do that from time to time. Here we have the Zoopedia for the Saiga. As you guys can see, it is critically endangered. Although the population isn't the smallest, it is more than 100,000 individuals. But it used to be millions of them, so it dropped dramatically and it is still dropping because of the, the diseases. They are very uh, prone to diseases uh, because of the climate change and the habitat loss. So. Uh, there needs to be some, you know, conservation uh, efforts to save this animal. Uh, when it comes to the ha natural habitat, they live in Asia, in Mongolia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan and Russia. Uh, the desert and the grasslands are its preferred biomes. Uh, it needs like a decent, decent size enclosure. It, it has quite a big uh, temperature range. You can have up to 11 from four, four to 11 of them. So they don't like to live in big groups, I would say. Uh, they are shy, so you need to be careful when placing them, for example, near the entrance to your zoo. Uh, the guests can actually enter the Saiga uh, habitat. Uh, the male is bigger than a female, as you guys could probably see. Uh, they have one to two offspring per mating event and the uh, reproduction in captivity is average. Uh, when it comes to uh, the enrichment, those are the typical enrichment for the hoofstock in Planet Zoo uh, and it doesn't have any interspecies enrichment. If the mute swan wasn't included in this DLC, I think that the sloth bear would be my favorite animal out of the entire pack. I think that this is one of the best animals in the game, like uh, when it comes to the design, when it comes to the details, the fur, uh, it is just so beautiful compared to other bears that we have in the game. Like it looks like from a totally different game, like from the game that has better graphics, better everything. This animal, of course, decided to go to sleep when I'm telling all the nice things about it, uh, is just exceptional. Uh, it has a lot of enrichment items that they can, they can use that I will show you in a second. But the way it looks is just, it just, I don't know, there's something so, so, so beautiful about this that I just cannot put it into words. Here you have a slightly smaller female where you can actually see this animal moving. Uh, I think that yeah, the face looks amazing. The fur is just, I don't know, not, I, we, I, we don't have such an animal in Planet Zoo. When I first released it to the habitats, uh, my jaw just dropped <laughs> to the floor uh, because during the early access time, this was the only animal that I actually, oh my God, this animation, look at that, yeah. <laughs> This might be actually one of my favorite animals in Planet Zoo right now. But what I wanted to say is that this was the only animal that I actually didn't see uh, because it was still not revealed when uh, when I got the early access. Uh, so uh, when I released it to the habitat, I was just just I couldn't believe my eyes how good it actually looked. Uh, of course, it decided to poop right now. Uh, OK, let's have a look at the baby. And I told you that there is a second contender for the award of the cutest baby from this pack. This is who I meant, this little sloth bear. Uh, 
uh, looking at it now, I think that I would actually give the first place to this animal because it is so cute. Uh, by the way, they of course can climb, they can do all the bear stuff, uh, they can use a lot of enrichment items that I already told you, but I am too excited and too distracted by the things that it just did uh, to remember those things, but oh my god. I cannot get over this fair and how how good it looks. Like, again, compare it to other bears that we have in the game. For example, the, uh, the grizzly bear or the Himalayan brown bear or even the Formosan black bear. It, like, there's no comparison. The, the sloth bear is just the best. I think we are about to see my favorite animation of this entire DLC. Just look what this bear will do. Yeah, it just jumps <laughs> into this pool, it enjoys itself and uh, in a second it will do a big shake. Oh my god, this is so cool, this is amazing, I just love that, you know, Plants just still adds those amazing animations, those unique animations for those new animals. Wow, my god, this was so so nice to see. And this big shake at the end, oh my god, yeah. The sloth bear is one of, officially one of my favorite animals in the entire game. It is so, so good. I was quite surprised to learn that the albino sloth bear exists, but apparently it does. It is just a white sloth bear with blue eyes. It looks very impressive, but very weird <laughs> uh, at the same time. You can see the animation of it playing with the box, but yeah, we have an albino sloth bear in the game as well. Here is a zoopedia for the sloth bear. Uh, the sloth bear is vulnerable, the population in the wild is unknown. Uh, it lives in Asia, in this part of Asia to be exact, in countries like India, Nepal and Bhutan. Uh, the biomes are grasslands, temperate and tropical. It needs quite a lot of space, it is typical for bears in this game. Uh, also it needs some climbing frames uh, and it needs quite a strong fence. The fence needs to be climb proof and quite high. Uh, when it comes to the species data, you can have up to two in one enclosure, one male and one female. And the relation with humans is neutral, the guests cannot enter the habitat for, uh, of course, uh, the male is bigger than a female, uh, then ha they have one to three offspring per mating event and the reproduction in captivity is average. Uh, when it comes to the enrichment items, there is so many that you can use for those guys and I am so so happy about this, especially about the beaver and the water pool because the animation is just so so good. Uh, the food enrichments, also there is quite a long list which makes me so happy, especially that they have uh, the tree scatter feeder and the foraging wall. It's so so good to see that. Of course there is no interspecies enrichment for the sloth bear. This is Europe's heaviest land animal and it is indeed huge, both in the game and in the real life. This is the Vicent, uh, the animal that is very important for my country, for Poland, because when it was hunted down nearly to extinction, uh, the conservation efforts that happened in my country helped to save this uh, this magnificent animal. Someone actually asked me if I can pronounce the name of the forest uh, that uh, it lives in my country, and this forest is called Białowieża. It is Białowieża Forest. Uh, so yeah, just for you <laughs> to know. Uh, so yeah, indeed, indeed, in Poland they live in Białowieża. You can meet a lot of them there. Uh, when we were breeding them in Białowieża, then we were sending those guys uh, to different parts of Europe to start new populations. And right now it is near threatened, it is no longer uh, close to extinction. Uh, so, uh, so, so amazing to see that. Uh, it is a huge animal. It is also a su such a step up uh, compared to the American bison. Uh, it is so much better looking than the American bison from the base game. Like, uh, the Americans can <laughs> sort of be jealous of us Europeans. They're, those animals are rather, rather similar. They belong to the same family, but this one is looking so, so much better. We are looking at the male right now. The male is bigger. It also has bigger horns. 
Here's a little baby Vincent. It is a tiny version of a parent. It is so small compared to them, but it is also so, so cute. Uh, I just love the, the babies in Planet Zoo. They always are such a joy to watch and this one is not, ex not an exception. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. I was quite surprised to learn that there's also a leucistic variant of the Vicent. I didn't know that such a thing exists, but apparently there is. So we have a white Vicent. It looks quite bizarre, but uh, also quite cool. Uh, and on this model, you can clearly see how much detail there is, because in this like darker coloration, it, the details are somehow like a bit like blending but in here like all of those hairs in here this just looks amazing oh my god such a cool animal we are about to see the animation of the Vincent just rolling in the mat they love it uh, just like uh, in real life uh, i have them in my local zoo and their habitat is so muddy so like always there's a lot of mud dirt and they are just rolling on in the in this mud or in the sand or anything just like this yeah uh, so yeah it loves its mud bath uh, and this is actually quite an interesting animal because uh, for example the american bison it lives more in like plains open areas and the vicent uh, they like to live in forests they like to you know be covered by all the uh, foliage and all the bushes and so on they are quite shy when it comes to the zoopedia facts for the vicent it is near threatened there's around two and a half thousands of them left uh, in the wild and the numbers are growing so it's so so cool to see uh, this is the population that started most of those populations, I think it is a Biao Vieja forest in my country. Uh, it lives in Europe, of course, in those uh, countries. Uh, it's, uh, the biomes are grasslands, taiga and temperate. Uh, it needs quite a lot of space. It is a big animal. It probably just grows fast if you add those you know, numbers in here. Uh, it needs quite a strong fence and it doesn't need to be that high. Uh, when it comes to species data, you can have up to 13 of them uh, in one enclosure and uh, only one male. Uh, of course, they will probably fight for the dominance. Uh, they have no trouble with humans. The guests cannot enter the habitat. The male is slightly bigger than the female. Uh, they have one offspring per mating event and the reproduction in captivity is easy. Uh, when it comes to the research and all the enrichment items, there's quite a lot that they can use. This is typical for bovids in this game, such as the wild water buffalo. Uh, and yeah, the food enrichment is as followed. Uh, and they have the interspecies enrichment with the European fallow deer, mute swan, red deer and wild boar. Those guys in general can just live together as a big happy family. Last but certainly not least, here is my new favorite exhibit animal, the Hermans Tertus. It just looks so incredible. For such a tiny thing, the details on this model are just incredible, like exceptional. Like it looks almost real. And I also love how how yellow it is because it clearly like stands out inside of this uh, exhibit. Uh, this is a new exhibit, a grasslands exhibit, uh, where you can add those logs and those guys are actually hiding those logs, which uh, is so cool. Uh, this guy is actually moving, it is a looped animation and it just makes circles, so this is also cool to see uh, that finally we have some more life in this exhibit. You would see an animal like a small turtle moving inside of this, so uh, this is so so cool to see. I just wanted to tell, show you some more of those guys. Uh, where are they hiding? For example, this one is in this log, which is amazing to see. Uh, this one is probably, oh this is the moving one, uh, but there's one that I particularly love. This one, uh, it just climbed this rock and is so happy about this, <laughs> like so proud of himself. Like, uh, <laughs> I just love him so much. <laughs> just look at it. Oh my God. Uh, so yeah, uh, new exhibit animal, new beautiful exhibit animal that I am so glad that I was added uh, because I think that we were missing a uh, small turtles in the game. Oh, this one is just sleepy. Okay, so here is a new grasslands exhibit and you, as you guys can see we can add uh, the rock piles in there 
We can add the lamps, but this is quite usual for those. And we can add those uh, locks in, in there. What we can also, of course, add is the walls, the 3D walls. And they are also new uh, because they are, they are kind of similar to the ones that we had for the desert one, desert exhibit, but they are more like mossy, uh, green and look very, very good. Here is a Zoopedia for the Hermans Tertis. Uh, it is near threatened, the population in the wild is unknown and this is a really beautiful picture of the, of the Tertis. Uh, it lives in Europe in the Mediterranean region, that's why it likes uh, like warmer temperatures. Uh, the humidity doesn't need to be that high. It is of course an exhibit animal. Uh, you can have up to 16 of them in one exhibit uh, and there is some sort of a difference between male and female, but uh, to be honest, I don't see that in the exhibit. Uh, they have two to five offspring per mating event and the breeding in cap captivity is easy. So you should really manage your population in, uh, in this exhibit box. Uh, those are all the things that you can add, of course, and there's no interspecies enrichment. As always, the new animals come with the new signs that you can place in your zoos. Uh, there's one sign for every animal and they are cohesive with the style of the signs that we got in the previous DLC, so it is always so nice to see. Uh, so we have the one for the Hermans Tertis, we have one for the Mute Swan, the Saiga, the Sloth Bird, the Takin, the Wild Boar, the Vicent and the Wolverine. And there's also a statue, the, uh, the Takin statue. Uh, I am sure that if you will complete the, uh, the campaign scenario for that comes with this DLC, you will unlock the bronze, the silver and the golden version of it. Okay guys, this is all when it comes to the showcase of the new Eurasia Animal Pack. I must admit that I really enjoy this DLC. Of course, I am a bit biased because I am European, but those animals are totally beautiful and those were some of the most requested species by our community. 4 out of 8 of them, the wild boar, the tacking, the sloth bear, the mute swan, were included in my personal wish list. so of course I am thrilled to finally have them in the game. Uh, I also wanted to give a huge shout out to the person who designed the new campaign map. It is so good and I believe that it is actually inspired by the Polish city called Zamosz. Do I still prefer the DLCs that include building pieces over the animal packs? The answer is yes, but this animal pack I think is truly exceptional and if you enjoy those I think that this is a totally must have so go and get it. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey of exploring the new Eurasia animal pack. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please consider to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video like this, give this video a big big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and of course leave me a nice comment down below and tell me what is your favorite animal out of the entire pack. If you like to support the channel a little bit extra you can do it with the join button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!